All right, welcome to Burn the Ship. I'm your host, Ezra Brown. This is the podcast where we connect entrepreneurs and professionals to help you go all in on your business. Without further ado, I'd like to let my guest introduce himself. Well, thank you, guys. It's a pleasure being here. Um, my name is John Matthews. I'm the president and CEO at Gray Cat Enterprises. I've been um, doing this for 20 years, so I just celebrated my 20-year anniversary in April. Um, uh, I'm a management consultant, and I specialize really in three different areas. I do strategic planning for companies. I do senior project management for companies, like they they have a project and they don't know who to give it to because everyone's got a day job and they bring in someone like me who's got experience to handle the project. And then the third area is I do interim executive management. Company goes out and buys a division. They want to keep it, they want to run it, but they don't have anyone full time to do it. So they bring me in to kind of manage it in the interim. Um, and I'll manage that anywhere from, you know, three months to three years until they figure out what they want to do. And then I move on to the next division or next that's company. Really awesome. When you do that, when you do the interim uh, management, we're really, it's the interim CEO probably, right? It, it can be a variety of things. Uh, generally, I'm, I'm more of the chief operating officer. You know, I, I yeah. do a P&L um, experience. I mean, I, they give me P&L management and, and, and duties for that. Uh, last year, I actually stepped in as the chief marketing officer for Destination Pet, which had, you know, 180 uh, pet centers and vet centers throughout the United States. They were in between CMOs. I wasn't going to be the full-time solution, so I bridged the gap for six or seven months and helped hire my replacement. And I just kind of go in and kind of figure out what's broken, how can I fix it in the short term, and then how can I transition it nice and smoothly to a full-time person. You got a pretty stellar uh, like resume. Tell us a little about who you've been with before before you started your own consulting gig. Well, I, I spent uh, nine years at Little Caesars. I started as a manager trainee, and within five years, I was the national marketing director, and I had 1,600 stores throughout the country, including 35 different markets. Um, and then I moved over to the convenience store world um, in Chicago, um, Clark Retail Enterprises, we had 1,400 locations, about a $3 billion company. And that's where I really kind of spread my wings. I was able to go in as a marketing person. Uh, but at the end of that 10 year, I was in charge of five different divisions, including, you know, merchandising, which was $900 million and the marketing. I was a company spokesperson. So I headed up corporate communications. I headed up all the real estate. So I had 1,400 properties to to manage, and then I was the head of facilities, which meant that I had repair and maintenance, environmental, construction, capital management, uh, purchasing, and the whole gamut. So really learned a lot there. Moved on to Jimmy John's, was the president of Jimmy John's, and then in 2004 started uh, Gray Cat Enterprises, and have been haven't looked back. That's super super awesome, yeah. And then kind of, you know, doing your day-to-day, -day, what's kind of been the, you know, that one thing that you could lean on that you did really well, this, you know, that knew that you could go into this entrepreneurship and kind of burn the ship? Well, you know what? I, I've i always been a networker. I've always stayed in touch. I, I'd laugh at, you know, some of my friends. If you give me your phone number, you're on my phone the rest of your life, you know, so just get used to it. I've probably got 9,000 contacts in my phone, literally 9,000 that I uh, still stay in touch with a lot of people in there, not all 9,000, but I stay in touch with a lot of people. And consequently, because I connect a lot of people together, uh, not necessarily to benefit me, but I'm just one of those connectors. I stay top of mind with a lot of people. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I post a lot of original content on LinkedIn. Uh, people have said to me, hey, I finally have a project for you. I've been reading your stuff for five years and I know you can do what we need you to do. And I don't really sell a lot. Um, it just kind of comes to me through, you know, being that kind of epicenter networker and uh, providing original content that people appreciate. Right, right, right. So, you know, what, what, and that's, I guess that, that's what you feel helped you grow your business, you know, super successfully as, as a, when you went in on your own. But, you know, is it just been that networking side and, or has it just been building your business through other, other avenues? It's, I'd say 90% of all my business comes directly through a contact that I have on LinkedIn, believe it or not. Or in your um, phone. And, or in my phone, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, you know, right. you, you build a reputation, you know. Uh, I, I get people who reach out to me saying, hey, I was talking to someone. You did a project for them three years ago. They really liked you. They, 
they felt you brought a lot to the table. I need, I need the same kind of help. Can you help me out? And consequently, that's what happens. The destination pet is a perfect example. One of the board members was a gentleman that I used to work with at Clark some 22 years earlier. And Rich and I have always stayed in touch. He was a vice president and I was a vice president. And we've been good friends for 25 plus years. And, um, and so when someone said, hey, we have, to, we have to have someone who knows what they're doing to come in and fill a gap, he goes, I got the guy for you, contact John, he'll do this. And sure enough, it happened. Well, I feel like, you know, and, and this is uh, my biggest question is, is I feel like you're uh, you, you work like an actor where you might be working for three months or three years. And then after that thing's done, you're you're essentially out of a job and you got to go find another interim spot. So how do you handle your pipeline when you kind of don't know if you're going to be there or not? Like that's an interesting it's just an interesting pipeline. Well, it's, I've always maintained probably three to five clients at a time in various okay. capacities. Um, I do have um, something on my website called the Gray Cat Learning Series where I have 15 online courses. And so I have some companies that just subscribe to those. So there's not a lot of work that I have to do because they're all recorded. Or if they have me come in maybe once a quarter, I do a live presentation to their managers or or what have you. So some of that stuff allows me to kind of time shift stuff. I can actually have revenue being generated from stuff I've already pre-recorded and everything along those lines. Sure. But I generally have, you know, three to five clients. And I, I kind of laugh because a lot of my friends who work in corporate jobs are like, man, how do you do that? Aren't you afraid you're going to lose your job? I said, you know what? I'd have to have five people simultaneously fire me at the same time for me to be out of work. You only have to have one guy fire you, and then you're out. That's of work. right. So right. that's right. I have, you know, I sit on a couple of boards, and so I get paid to sit on boards. I have this online stuff. I do the interim stuff. I've got projects, and I stay I stay on top of it. But believe it or not, for twenty plus years, I've never not had work. So it's yeah. it's worked. No, I I know I totally believe you. It's and and e yeah. even if you didn't, you probably could get somebody real fast. But uh, it's just an interesting pipeline because it, you are you are the business. They want your brain, they want your expertise. Yeah, and I and I, you know, I've had a, a number of people say, "How come you don't branch out? How come you don't hire people to work underneath you?" And that was my that know, was my next question: is scalability exactly. wise for Gray Cat? Is, yeah, is there is there maybe an old exec that wants to get out of that that you would bring on? You know, I do have some colleagues that I partner with on certain projects. Like when we do store design, um, I, I'm not an architect. I'm not the best merchandising guy out there. I'm an operations and marketing and merchandising guy, you know, but I'm, I'm not going to do a set. I, I've got vision for what it has to look like and, and what the brand should look like. But I work with a guy who's an architect who can actually take my ideas and put it into practicality. And the right. same with the merchandising and, you know, I'm not a CAD cam guy. You need plans, you need all this stuff. And so I've had these colleagues that I work on projects with uh, to be able to do it. I, you know, I used to manage 60 to 70 people and I got tired of being an administrator. I got tired of being, a, you know, doing performance reviews and, you know, moving from meeting to meeting and nodding my head. I like doing the work. And so I've kind of resisted bringing on people. Um, and I also tell my clients that you're you're getting the A team. You're getting the guy that you're talking to. I'm not going to farm it out to someone who's junior to me. And you're going to get all of my experience. And consequently, that's what I charge. Why I charge what I charge because that's you're right. getting the A team. So They're right, you. yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And time's your most precious commodity. And it's and you, you know you having multiple different businesses that are kind of under your umbrella or under your wing. You know that that time's important. So, you, so bef before we started the podcast, you were talking about an auto, an, an, uh, an auto repair client with you know uh, fifty plus locations. And do you you feel like retail because uh, you came from the the restaurant uh, you know pizza world with the, with uh, Little Caesars? I heard you talk about a pet, you know, pet vet and probably retail pet client and as and vets kind of like a it seemed like a pet smart to me where it has a vet inside a a, yep. a box retail store. Uh, it sounds like your verticals are all over the place. So it doesn't really matter what it is. I'm, I'm very industry agnostic. Um, yeah. My longest running client, which has been between 12 and 13 years is deluxe. 
and Deluxe is a B2B company um, where they said, you probably heard of Deluxe, they're the big check printer. They do promotional items. They do anything with a logo on it. Like this shirt came from Deluxe. They source the, the Nike brand and then they put the logo on and stitch it and do everything like that. $2 billion company, huge company, been around a hundred years. And I've worked off and on with them for the last 12 to 13 years. And they've I've actually run some of their divisions um, on an so interim basis. So the majority basis, of their so. profit, are their, their sales come off uh, B2B uh, promotional marketing uh, sales, promotional shirts, T-shirts, golf bags, things like that. They print it on and, and check printing. You know, if, if you've ever gone to a bank and you got your checks, most likely they're either coming from Deluxe or, or a couple other check providers. Yeah, so they're we're, doing we're, that we're, as in well. the, we're in the payments business. We, I understand checks. I mean, these new yeah. guys don't understand checks, yeah, exactly. but I understand them. I have, a, I have deals with, with uh, check processing places because, you know, I told you, like, we're on the phone. I'm, we're a merchant services in, uh, uh, co company. Exactly. So, no, I know checks. Heartland uh, is probably one of the bigger check printing companies. It and, is. and I've heard it of is. Deluxe for sure. Uh, yeah. There's a couple on the West Coast that that, that still do uh, check printing. But it's uh, – they had to get into other things now. Yeah. So, I've been – you know, I've been involved with the B2B company with Deluxe. I've sold uh, four companies under Gray Cat because I went through that process at Clark where we actually sold the company. So, I sold two uh, technology companies. So, I've been involved in that. I have convenience store uh, clients. I have uh, – I've had quick service restaurant clients. Obviously, those two are in my, in my wheelhouse. Uh, I've done a number of different – projects from you know facilities related projects to pure marketing projects to operational and PL projects so it's it you know honestly it keeps me invigorated because i get to i don't get bored doing one particular thing um and i look forward to um you know kind of that next project or that next industry that i get introduced to and i kind of go oh this is kind of cool i could do this for the next six to twelve months uh, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. That's super awesome. Yeah. It's I, I think it's cool, you know, de being able to deal with new people. You know, I know a lot of people would be like run away from that, but I'm, I'd be like coming in there and, and getting inspiration from new people because I get I try to get new inspiration from people. I don't go around the negative Nancy ones. I go around the ones that that can, you know, fill my tank a little bit. And I, I'm sure that's a that's pretty cool going around these people and learning about them and you know because they're in that business. You know, they've been in it for a while, more than likely. Yeah. And so I guess the good thing is, is I come with a, a, a quiver full of a lot of arrows and I can say, you know, you're doing it this way, but let me tell you how this other company did it in this industry that might be uh, applicable to what you're trying to do, or here's a different perspective, but this is how they set up their capital management, or this is how they went to market with their marketing strategy. And then I can kind of pick and choose Kind of the best of the best and apply it to this new client and so they're getting a resource that isn't just you know i've only done it this way and i've only worked in this industry and now i'm going to try to wedge it into your industry right. i've got a lot of different industries that i can pull from and say hey you know what i might be able to cobble something together that would apply to exactly what you're trying to do and and minimize the amount of mistakes that we're going to make because i've i've kind of been there and, and seen how it's actually executed so it's kind of it's interesting. I'm a I'm a puzzle guy, and I it's kind of like every client I walk into, they it's like all the pieces are on the ground, and I got to figure it out. We really appreciate yeah. you coming on here and, and talking to us. Uh, you know, we, I'm I'm looking to, forward to following up with you in six months and seeing a year, seeing seeing what else, and doing another podcast, seeing what other new new clients you got. Uh, it sounds really exciting. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of you uh, via email or website or all that. If they want to well, if you go to go courses, to my website, kind of yeah, if you go to my website, it's uh, www.graycatenterprises.com, and it's gray, G-R-A-Y, catenterprises.com. And on there, you'll see the Gray Cat Learning Series. You'll see a way to get in touch with me. It's got my email address and my I think my mobile number is even on there. Uh, my email is john.matthews, with two Ts, at graycatenterprises.com. But there's a lot of case studies on the website. There's the learning series. I've got a blog that if you want to follow the blog, you can you can do that. So there's a variety of different things. And then if you want to find me on LinkedIn, it's just John Matthews at Gray Cat and, you know, find me there. And I've got a Gray Cat page on LinkedIn and I've got a John Matthews profile as well. And I like I said, I post 
Um, a lot of interesting content, uh, all self-written content. I posted something today on time management, and I posted something on my multi-unit uh, store course that you can take. So if it applies to you, you got a resource. That's awesome. awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, go out there and, and, and look at, uh, at John's stuff. Uh, he's a wealth of uh, information. It sounds like wealth of knowledge. You got a lot of experience in a lot of different industries. So go out there and, uh, and, and see and get all his content and soak it in. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. You betcha. Thanks guys. Everybody yes, be kind to each other out there.